Hey, everybody. Harry here to talk about a decision yesterday by a federal circuit court of appeals that really would weaken uh, the Voting Rights Act, the part of it that still remains after what's been a rough couple years. Um, we're talking about Section 2 uh, of the Voting Rights Act, and that section um, makes practices that have the effect of diluting racial representation, like gerrymandering drawn to really uh, disadvantage minority groups, makes those uh, illegal. And the, the case here brought uh, about Arkansas by the NAACP said that a gerrymandering had resulted in a uh, number of districts that were way fewer than should have been and, and showed a racial impact. Now, quick history of the Voting Rights Act, one of the three or two most important kind of crown jewels in the 60s, uh, uh, along with the, the Civil Rights Act. And it had many provisions. The most visible and important was Section 5, which uh, created a presumption of, or, or at least a, a concern among certain states with a real history of discrimination so that when they made changes to their voting procedures, they had to run it by the DOJ. And the Supreme Court a few years back basically struck uh, Section 5 out of the Voting Rights Act, said that the legislative assumption <clears throat> as against those states was no longer valid, enough time had passed. And that left Section 2 as really the only uh, and certainly the most important means of enforcing the guarantees of the Voting Rights Act, and in particular of uh, fighting, especially gerrymandering, you know, weird maps that were designed to disenfranchise or dilute the impact of minority groups. Now, as you may recall, in the last um, uh, term, the Supreme Court reaffirmed the importance of Section uh, 2, and there was a whole lawsuit in Alabama, up and down, where um, the the court, to the surprise of some, said, no, Section 2 is still in the game here. It still matters. So if you draw a map that, uh, in effect, uh, dilutes the voting power of uh, racial groups by basically creating fewer than there should be racial um, districts that have so-called majority minority, that violates um, the section. So you've seen weird little maps and um, African American representation is effectively, um, coalesces into a few, um, intensely minority, uh, districts and therefore the overall numbers in the states, uh, are fewer than, than they, uh, should be based on the actual percentages of, of African American, uh, voters in the state. All right. That leads us to yesterday's decision. So what still remains, Section 2, the question before the A Circuit was, uh, may private persons like the NAACP sue to enforce the Voting Rights uh, Act? So the um, uh, Arkansas legislature did this um, ger gerrymandering that, uh, in effect, diluted the minority uh representation and they sued and the a circuit uh said no for it held for the first time that uh private people can't sue only the attorney general of the united states now the supreme court has never expressly held it had, hasn't taken up a case that said can private persons sue but it has said repeatedly that um it, it has it has um, accepted and ruled in a series of cases ba that private persons brought. And in the case invalidating Section 5, as I mentioned, uh, one of the things that the Supreme Court said is, oh, it's not such a big deal because there still remain private rights of action under Section 2. People can still bring those cases. And there are hundreds, literally, that have been brought since 1965. So the dissenting uh, judge in the A Circuit, the chief judge said, you know, you are completely taking a buzzsaw to uh, 
40, 50 years of precedent, you really should not do that without clear congressional uh, authority, or at least the, you know, it's got to be up to the Supreme Court. Uh, the two, um, judges in the majority was two to one. A, um, George W. Bush appointee and a Trump appointee said, well, you know, we, we see it the other way. We think co it's Congress that has to be super clear. Uh, that's what we generally require in order for, uh, to infer that a, a statute permits private people to sue. And here it doesn't say one way or another. And moreover, there is a concurring opinion. I, th I think it's Kavanaugh, uh, in the Supreme Court that, and, and Thomas has made noises along these lines too. It just underscores the Supreme Court has never precisely decided this question. So Supreme Court's never exactly said so. And Congress, as we read it, didn't, didn't say so clearly. So our ruling is there is no private right of action. All right. This, uh, so let's talk about the impact of this case. It would, it would be a revolution, uh, or you could say a counter revolution in civil rights law at this point. The, um, Voting Rights Act has already, already been reduced to a shadow of its former self, and this would wipe out much of the shadow. All that could happen would be the Attorney General and the, and the United States would, would have to, um, come in to sue for any violations. The United States, in this case, you have, a, uh, a, some days, three or four days for the, to come in. The United States declined to come in, but they actually, um, submitted a brief in the A circuit uh, supporting the rights of uh, private persons to bring suit under Section 2 so that they the, the two uh, judges in the majority specifically went against that view. Um, and now that Section 5 is basically out of business and if Section 2 is, is narrowed so that private persons couldn't bring the lawsuit, really the, the channels get smaller and uh, thinner. Uh, and everybody understands that, that this Congress, the Senate, is not going to pass uh, a new statute overruling or making express that there's a private right of action much, much harder to pass new uh, legislation of this sort than, you know, just to have it on the books. So in that sense, it's a for for civil rights um, practitioners and for, you know, those concerned about, um, dilution of, of, uh, minority votes. It's a very, uh, worrisome opinion. The only thing is it basically forces the Supreme Court to take up the case and answer the question. The Fifth Circuit in the case that went, um, back and forth from Alabama has made it clear as every, every other, uh, court of appeals to consider it. And the Fifth Circuit considered it expressly. Every, every court has made, let many cases go through and the Fifth Circuit has ruled expressly there is a private right of action. So now it's almost a forced move for the Supreme Court to take it up at that point, of course with uh, one of the most conservative courts in uh, history, and Thomas Alito, what Kavanaugh said in um, uh, that concurring opinion, you know, it becomes a very um, pivotal, dramatic, closely watched question whether the court will go the way of the Eighth Circuit. But um, for now, you would say that the opinion is is very ominous except it's going to go up to the Supreme Court and that, and that, that court will decide in any event. So really the, a circuit more or less sets it up for the court to decide. And, but that's going to be, you know, they'll probably take the, the case fairly soon, but it'll be a year or so until the decision is, um, issues. But this, um, really important principle, especially after decisions, of recent years, may private persons bring lawsuits to enforce the um, Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act prohibiting vote dilution, uh, changes that have a, the, the result or impact of vote dilution of, of minorities' um, uh, voting power 
is now on the chopping block, has been chopped off in the Eighth Circuit, and is now on the chopping block generally awaiting Supreme Court review. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.